Hello and welcome to our webinar on Salesforce's program management module. My name is Ruben Singh and I'll be your presenter for this session. I am also the founder and CEO of One Tenth Consulting. One Tenth Consulting is a registered Salesforce.com and Salesforce.org partner and we work exclusively with nonprofits. Uh, One Tenth has a variety of services from uh, strategy to implementation and change management. And we are very excited to uh, discuss this topic with you today, Salesforce's program management module. Uh, while the program management module or the PMM as it's often referred to is a very well marketed and very well documented application, uh, we at One Tenth wanted to give you a different angle uh, and perspective of the feature. As consultants who've worked with many organizations that deliver programs before this module was available and also uh, some of our experiences having implemented it over the recent months. So we hope this gives you a more practical understanding of the feature set uh, and we'll definitely offer up some lessons learned from our experience implementing it. So as I mentioned before, we've worked with several nonprofits over the years that deliver programs. And to simply put it, the CRM systems that have supported them over the years have really fallen short when it comes to program management. Uh, nonprofit CRM systems have come a long way with uh, other features, you know, donor management, complex gift processing, grant management, case management, email marketing, you name it. And some have even extended their scope to volunteer management. But when it comes to program management, there hasn't really been much. So our customers have been using everything from Excel spreadsheets to Google Docs to program to actually project management tools to track their program information and measure their impact. And while nonprofits are great with making things work with the tools they have, uh, it is definitely less than ideal, uh, even if for the simple fact that your program data is now completely disconnected from your constituent and fundraising data. And now you need to go to multiple places to get the full view of the constituent. Furthermore, it perpetuates this idea that I often challenge that, hey, you know, my program participants, they are my program participants. My volunteers are my volunteers. My donors are my donors. My partner contacts belong in their own place. Everybody has their own category and in their own box that they belong in. And at one tenth, we believe this approach is very limiting. And you end up with losing out on engaging your constituents in different ways. Uh, in fact, your program participants know your work more deeply than anyone else does. Uh, so why shouldn't they be solicited for volunteer opportunities or donations? Uh, of course, there are exceptions depending on the type of work you do where it may not be appropriate, but we often find that by breaking down some of these data silos, you'll find ways for your constituents to engage in your work uh, in, in never before seen ways. Uh, and for years, we've been customizing program management for nonprofits, so it's very refreshing to see that Salesforce has added this program management module to the core platform. So to, to summarize, who is this module for? Uh, it is really for any nonprofit that is offering programs and services. It provides a standard framework, uh, not only to define those programs and services, but also to see who is engaged and what actual services are delivered down to the units. Uh, and also provides very meaningful output through reports and dashboards. Uh, it is free in the sense that if you have Salesforce licenses, whether they are donated through the Power of Us program, uh, they are paid licenses or a combination of both, there is no extra charge to download the program management module. So you download it from the App Exchange, make a few configurations, and you're good to go. And this is important to note because several features recently released from Salesforce, um, you know, there are some that are paid and some that are not. And this is one of those modules that is, uh, that is uh, a free app. So the functionality of the program management module can be broken down into these following components. The first of which is programs and services. Programs are just that, you know, what, uh, what programs does your nonprofit offer? Uh, and uh, what are the different services that live underneath each program? As you can imagine, you could have many programs and you can have different services underneath each. And we'll go through examples of each of these. Um, but for programs, what is it that your organization delivers and what are the different sort of subcategories or services that fall underneath each of those? The second is program engagement. So a program engagement is where we connect a program to an individual. It is essentially the intersection of the two. So when someone applies or is enrolled in your program, you create a program engagement record and an individual can be tied to one or many program engagements. 
program cohorts. Now, this is something I honestly don't see a lot, but perhaps it's more common in certain program areas over others. But this is essentially a way of flagging a group of individuals and grouping them together for programmatic purposes. Uh, let's say that a group of participants are enrolling in a job training program that you offer, and it's funded by a government grant. Well, you can call this cohort the 2020 grantees or federal grantee recipients, or let's say there's a group of participants who are enrolling in a program due to a campaign that you launched during your annual gala. Uh, so these could be a gala participants. So basically, if there's any way you want to track impact by a group, cohorts uh, can be of use. The next uh, area here is service delivery. So service delivery is where everything ties together. It's where you tie the participant to a service. So where counseling, for example, may be a service of yours, attending an actual counseling session would be your service delivery. So a service delivery record can be created for each session of counseling, each works, workshop that you deliver, each pound of food or meal that you distribute. So when you think of service delivery, think of your impact reporting and how you want to measure your work. And with bulk service delivery, as you can imagine, there will be a lot of service deliveries to track, especially if you have multiple services and multiple programs. So Salesforce has thought of this and uh, offered a bulk service delivery tool. So think of it like a gift entry manager feature for programs. You can enter multiple service deliveries in one place and commit them to the database all in one shot. So let's take a little bit of a look under the hood here with our ERD. As you can see that we have uh, two standard objects here and five custom objects. So this module will install five custom uh, objects into your Salesforce org. I'll kind of work from the bottom working up here. So we start with a program. As you can see, a program has many services associated with it and you can have many cohorts tied to that program. And as we said, the program engagement is where we tie the individual, where we, can where we tie that constituent to the program. And that program can have many service deliveries associated with it. So in a nutshell, this is sort of what the overall uh, data model data architecture looks like. All right, so we're gonna go into a demo here in just a minute, but uh, let's, let's uh, put together a, a, a use case. So here's my fictional um, human services organization called Helping Hands, and they provide services and support to individuals returning home from incarceration. So here we have four different programs, jobs, housing, food security, and financial. And underneath each of those are the services that we offer, interview workshop, resume workshop, transitional housing, so on and so forth. So this is the, the, the model that we're going to look at when we take a look at the system. And let's do that right now. Let's jump into our Salesforce org. All right. Okay. So what we have here is uh, our homepage, and I like to keep things as out of the box as possible, so you can really see what things are going to look like as soon as you uh, as soon as you install the package. Uh, and so you have your homepage here, which we're going to talk about a little bit in a minute, uh, and you have your uh, default app here for program management, specifically with the tabs and tools that you need. Let's first take a look just as an overview at what uh, the programs look like. And here are the different examples that I showed you earlier. And let's go into jobs. So here for the jobs program, I can indicate the status. Is it active? Is it a former program? I can give a high level description when it started, so on and so forth. I also have this quick snapshot here to see how many people have enrolled in this particular program this month. Um, underneath that, I can see all the services that are associated to this particular program and then all the engagements. So these are all the people who are either enrolled, applied, uh, what, what have you, tied to this particular program. And in this case, I do have one program cohort associated with them, the, the 2020 scholarship program. So from here, this is a program. Let's take a look at what a service looks like. So again, this is a service that falls underneath a particular program. Again, I can give a description, but this is where I indicate the unit of measurement. So in this case, this workshop is measured in hours. But as I mentioned, you can have workshops, you can have classes, you can have pounds of food, you can have number of meals delivered. So you can really get creative with how you use this uh, measurement piece right here. And I can see how many units were delivered over the last six months and then the service delivery. So again, we have our program, we have our service, and then we have, before I go to service delivery, let me talk a little bit about program engagement. So I'm gonna go back here and I look at Clint's record and I can see that Clint is associated to this program, uh, the jobs program through this program engagement record. 
and I could then see all the different sessions that Clint participated in, in this case, workshops that he participated in. These are the service deliveries. So this is the program engagement record. Uh, and then for each time that uh, he has participated in one of the services that we offer, you can have your service delivery um, uh, analysis here. And one thing I want to call out here is this says, this is the service that uh, he participated in. It was for one hour. And the assumption here is that this is an internal um, staff member who's providing the service, but in the case where it might be an external service provider or you've referred that person to someone else, to someone else you can indicate who that uh, service provider is. So that way you can kind of see how many of these uh, service deliveries were referred out. So that's just a quick overview, again, of the four areas that I, that I wanted to show you in terms of the, the program, the service, the program engagement, and service delivery. Let's walk through an example. So I'm going to go to Sandra's record right here. She is a contact in the system. As you can see at a quick look, I have some basic information about Sandra, and I have um, an open case uh, that she is associated with. And let's say that we get to a point where we decide that um, uh, Sandra is going to be enrolled into one of our programs. So you'll see this new button right here called add contact to a program. And it's going to give me the programs that we're going to associate with her uh, to, to her. And I'm going to say financial. And I can say what role she's going to play. Is she a client volunteer service provider? She's going to be a client. And let's say I hear my different options, but I'm going to say that we're going to go ahead and enroll her. At this point, I'm not going to associate her with a um, cohort, but I'll give it the start date of today. And now she has been enrolled in the program and that is going to cr create a program engagement. So she's now enrolled in the financial uh, program. And then whenever she attends an actual uh, workshop of ours or a class of ours specific to uh, financial, we can create a new service delivery. So here I'm on the program engagement record. I'm going to hit create new service delivery. And I can indicate that she attended the financial literacy workshop and it was one unit. So it was one class that she provided. It was done internally. So we can leave this blank and I hit save. So now on Sandra's record, if I just jump back to her client record, uh, to her contact record there, I can see, um, again, her information, the cases she's associated with. I can see the service, uh, the program engagements that she's associated with. And I should be able to see that service delivery. And there it is. Okay. And there's the service delivery. So I really get a good snapshot of everything that's going on with Sandra just by looking at her contact record. So as you can imagine, if I'm doing uh, service deliveries all day across multiple programs, I'm going to need something else, a quicker way to enter those rather than going one by one. And that's where this bulk service deliveries tool comes in handy. Um, so here's where I can enter a few different people. And uh, I'm just going to say that it's going to financial one here. Okay, I'm going to add another entry here. And I'm going to say that Joe is, um, he's already has an engagement for housing. So I, I need to make sure that the, the engagement already exists um, before I use this tool. And so you can see that depending on what I select here, it uh, will change the units. And there's one voucher. Okay. And then let's add one more service or, or one more service delivery. We have um, John, his engagements. We have one here for housing also. We'll put him down for one hour transitional housing discussions. Um, so here I can put as many of these as I want. It's pretty easy to add as many entries. Uh, I can hit done and it's going to add all three of those service deliveries in one shot. So at a high level, those are some of the things I want to show, wanted to show you. Again, it's the program, it's the service, the program engagements, um, the service delivery and the bulk service delivery. Uh, just the last thing that, you know, since we're here, uh, again, the homepage is super useful. Um, it provides active program engagements, the service delivery uh, summary here. Um, you can also use this for just key data integrity, data hygiene type of information. So I like this example, you know, show me all my client records with missing phone numbers. So think about all those things that make it really tough for you as a, as a service delivery organization, as a program delivery organization, uh, especially when it comes to data hygiene. And you can call these things out, you know, give me all my contacts that don't have uh, birth dates. Give me all my contacts where there's a lead source undefined. 
and start bringing those things to your homepage uh, so that you can surface these types of issues uh, as you go along. The other thing I wanted to point out, and the last thing I'll point out, is there are some prepackaged reports that come as part of the uh, of part of the program management module. So if I go into all folders here, I will see embedded reports, and I will see this un uh, this unpackaged program management report folder. And so these are all excellent uh, reports here. Pretty much all the ones I would create for a customer, you know, as part of a, a small project. Um, so these are all available to you out of the box as soon as you install the module. All right, so that is what I wanted to cover in terms of the demo. So now let's talk a little bit about um, some of the things that we've learned or some of the things that um, you know, we've noticed as we have uh, implemented this, uh, this feature. So let me jump over back here. All right. So what do we like? What do we like about Salesforce's program management module? Well, for starters, it has a very simplified, clean architecture. It's only a handful of objects, as you saw, and it really doesn't mess uh, with too many of the core objects. It's on the periphery of the core data model, which is always preferred, as opposed to some of the apps that we've worked with that repurpose existing objects or uh, insert um, objects into places that disturb or disrupt the core model. Um, but more so, the simplified architecture makes it very easy to scale. Oftentimes, when it comes to programs, I've seen organizations say, you know, especially when it comes to human services, you know, sometimes programs change or needs change or funding changes and the organization needs to pivot quickly. Uh, let's say you're focusing on counseling and then months later you need to add legal casework. Then a few months after that, you need to add immigration work. Uh, then months later, you decide, oh, maybe we need to pause on counseling for a bit and start doing more advocacy work. If you have to create different objects and, and disturb your data model each time a program comes on board or is deactivated, uh, you're going to create a jumbled mess in your Salesforce org. And trust me, I have seen it. So this simple model allows you to onboard and offboard, if that's a word, um, different programs in a very simple way. And it is open source, so you do have the ability to configure and customize on top of what's there. So, you know, let's say your out of the box program management module is going to handle 75% of your use cases, but say you need to track additional intake information like schooling or income or demographics or family makeup, living situations. Uh, or maybe you need to track something more program specific, like your meals on wheels type of organization, and you want to track the cost of each meal for each delivery or the type of meal that's delivered. Um, or let's say you want to add some automation. So you want to notify someone via email every time there's a program engagement of a certain subcategory. Whatever the case may be, this model will allow you to expand through configuration or even build on top uh, through custom objects, through automations, or even Apex code if you want to get even fancier. Um, as I mentioned, we really like the home page and the prepackaged reports. Uh, in previous, it, it might seem like a small thing, but in previous releases, this is often very light in the nonprofit success pack. You know, they show this, this great functionality, really cool functionality that's been delivered, but no real easy way to visualize the output. So you're essentially starting from scratch. So these reports and home pages are fantastic, and they give you a good idea of what is possible uh, and even a good starting point. And so most of the orgs I work with, they're just going to essentially clone these existing reports and start creating their own from there. Also, the install and config is pretty straightforward. You do not need to down, you, you actually, all you need to do is download the app from the app exchange and you need to enable my domain. Uh, outside of that, of that, it's a pretty simple install for admins, but I would uh, recommend you follow the instructions very carefully because there are a few profile modifications and permission sets that you'll need to configure so everyone in the organization sees all the relevant information for them. And of course, as I mentioned, it is free. Um, it is free in the way that you're not paying additional costs. And I know anytime I can tell my nonprofit clients that they get uh, cool new functionality that they, that they don't need to um, pay an extra fee for, that makes them really, really happy. Um, so it makes me happy too. Uh, so thanks to Salesforce for that. Uh, and of course, it's a living, breathing product. If you're on the Power of Us hub, uh, there is a group dedicated directly to this module. Uh, note that there are, uh, there's two groups. There's a program management group and a program management module group. 
both are good. I would recommend joining both, but the program management module one, PMM, is the one that's specific to this product. So be sure to, to join that group, stay aware of enhancements um, because they are having frequent updates and releases, um, and be sure to offer up your feedback uh, for improvements. So those are the things that we like, um, but here are some other things that you're gonna wanna consider uh, before you implement this solution. Uh, one is um, there is no clear way to do program intake. Um, and, and we've played around with it differently for different organizations based on what their need was. But we found that when it comes to intake, so you're taking on a new client for the first time, some of the information might be more case specific, like it's more point in time. Some of it might be more contact specific. Some of it might be more program specific, excuse me. So there's three different sets of data and you need to figure out what makes sense to put what at what place in, in which place. So for example, if it's high level information that precedes enrolling in a program, well, maybe that belongs on a case record. You know, so-and-so called for this reason. But if it's info that does not change frequently, like their birth date, their race, their schooling, that might belong on the contact. Um, and then anything else that's more program specific belongs on the program engagement layout. So you could potentially have up to two to three places to enter information um, when you are intaking a new client. So again, it's just a matter of thinking it through ahead of time, designing it accordingly, and, and um, uh, making sure perhaps you build the necessary uh, automations to simplify it. The other component of this is you only have one program engagement layout to work with. Out of the box, it does not change depending on the program. It's still the same layout. So even though you might have vastly different programs, the layout for program engagement is the same for each program. So for my organizations that I work with, this was actually not too much of a problem. They actually preferred to have one long layout with all their intake fields uh, and then break it up in sections based on, based on the program area that they were, um, the different program areas that they had. So it's more scrolling, but it really had the fewest amount of clicks. So that was their preferred way to do it. Other than that, there's no real easy way to use record types because as you saw when I said add contact to a program, it just brings up one form. You can't insert or intercept that by giving you a record type solution, uh, a record type option there. So uh, if you don't like the you know, one program engagement layout and um, the, the one long form, then you might need to look into other options like a, um, adding a lightning uh, dynamic page uh, or excuse me, the dynamic lightning pages functionality uh, where based on you know, certain criteria, it will give a different layout. So these are solvable problems, but just you know, wanna give you some ideas of things that you might wanna think about. So yes, there is uh, one layout out of the box for the program engagement and it doesn't necessarily vary by programs unless you're willing to do some more configuration and customization there. The second thing is uh, the program mo management module is disconnected with the standard case functionality available in the sales cloud. So I, I mentioned cases a couple times. Case management is not required to use for program management, uh, but most of the orgs that I work with need some element of it. Um, and there's no real connection between the two pieces of functionality. So um, again, when I'm referring to case management, I'm talking about the basic case management that comes with Sales Cloud. So uh, if you're using it, there's no seamless way to hand things off between the case side of things and the program management functionality. So many of the orgs that I'm working with are using Chatter as a way to facilitate that handoff. But if you do wanna make that relationship tighter, uh, you might want to create some lookup fields, maybe on the case record for the program so you can see you know, what they were referred to. Uh, or on the program record itself, have a lookup back to the original case so you can see where it originated from. Of course, you can get fancier and create some automations or workflows where you can create program engagements from the case itself. But just know that there is a little bit of a disconnect there in case you're using the standard case functionality. And then facilitating handoffs, I think I pretty much covered this. There is that disconnect there. So um, you know, if you have an engagement team, a delivery team, a case management team, uh, you'll have to figure out how best to communicate with one another if there is no autom automation. And for the most part, what I've seen is uh, you know, a real discipline use of chatter is a good way to do that. There's also this potential overlap with the new nonprofit cloud case management functionality. So as you may know, Salesforce did release its nonprofit cloud case management functionality earlier this year. And while the program management module doesn't require it per se, uh, it was designed to work in tandem with the PMM. So especially for human service use cases, 
uh, the new functionality, the, the, two, the two features work together in that you can take the participant through the entire life cycle from case to intake to tracking any incidents to full program management. So it's designed to address some of the gaps that I've mentioned uh, in these earlier bullet points. Um, but you should know there is a fee for the nonprofit case cloud functionality and uh, may potentially require a service cloud license. That part's been a little ambiguous to me looking at the documentation, but there's definitely a fee for the case management functionality. So most of my clients have, have gone with the standard case functionality in sales cloud and using the PMM module because they just simply could not afford or justify the cost for the new cloud case management feature. But my recommendation is before you build out the PMM, before you build out the program management module, at least take a look at what the nonprofit cloud case management functionality offers you. Um, because maybe it's not something you implement now, but it's something you grow into over time. Uh, and it's important you don't want to build something that might create an overlap in functionality or duplicative functionality um, later. So if there's some, and surely if, if I know this might sound a little complex, so if you need someone to help walk you through these decisions and you know help put together a roadmap for you, we're happy to do so. Uh, another thing, and I'm, I'm actually going to just jump right in the system here. It might be a little easier to show this. Uh, another thing is we noticed uh, for at least many of the organizations that we work with, uh, it's very important to list out uh, familial relationships. So um, let's say the, the spouse's name, the you know, children's name, you know, who's living in a house with you, so on and so forth. And there really wasn't any place to capture that. So you can surely create custom fields for all that. Or what we did is we just added the relationships uh, functionality here. And this is, of course, just adding the related list to the layout. And we use relationships as a way to track all those familial relationships. But that was just one thing that we, we saw that was missing that we quickly added. And the, the last point I have here is there's no formal referral module. Uh, this is something we were hoping would be built out a little bit, but maybe this is something that might come later. Um, but there's no real functionality for referrals. Uh, there's just a field you know, that we saw there, a service provider that allows you to indicate you know, who may have delivered the service if it was external. Um, but I'd recommend building this out a little bit more. Maybe you know, not just use a, a service provider field for contact. Maybe you want to add one for organization. Maybe have its own heading and sections there uh, that you can run some reports eventually. So you can get some good insight there on how many um, organizations or individuals you referred out. So I would recommend building out that referral functionality a little bit more. So all criticism aside, uh, we are very happy with this product and we are very happy to see it uh, part of the core model and um, all the organizations that we've worked with, um, we've been able to implement it for without any, any real issues and uh, they've been able to use it right off the bat and, and move off a lot of their Excel spreadsheets and templates. So all these things that, um, oh, and, and just so you have it, um, there's plenty of resources available. Uh, you can track down this document right here. Uh, this is just a nonprofit uh, program management write-up, and here I can uh, just show you what it would look like. Um, and so this gives you a great snapshot of what's available, um, what the feature story is, how other organizations have used it, um, and then links, of course, to other documentation and demos. I would also recommend, uh, and I just went through this recently, the program management trailhead. It gives you, just like all other trailhead tools, it just really gives you a, a great overview of the functionality. Um, but it also has some good links to resources, both documentation as well as videos. So you can get a really good handle on what the functionality offers. I also mentioned the, the PMM or Program Management Module Power of Us Hub Group. So definitely uh, log into that, join that group so you can uh, stay aware of all upcoming developments with the product. And then of course, a great place for information is the App Exchange uh, listing itself. And um, this is where you would actually download things. And again, it does have um, links to demos as well as um, documentation on the features. So I know I, I made all this sound like, oh, it's really simple to do and really simple to implement, but you know, it's not always simple. So, so one-tenth consulting can help. Um, what we can do for you is uh, many things. We can review your current program delivery model, understand how your business works, help you map it out, and really figure out, is this the right solution for you? Is the Salesforce program management module the right solution for you? And if so, how can we bring it into your org? We can perform a fit gap analysis uh, and put together a roadmap for you, chart out a roadmap on how you can bring this feature into your system, as well as bring over any data that might be living in other places uh, and get that up and running for you so you can have a dashboard uh, um, on all your programs in no time. 
we can assess your current CRM. Sometimes we, we walk in and say, ah, we can easily implement the PMM module. Uh, and other times we say, ooh, this is like a 10 year old system. Maybe we need to relook at, uh, you know, maybe starting fresh. Uh, if you're ready for, for a, a fresh look at um, NPSP, we can help you assess your current CM. And we have uh, products available like our Fresh Start program, our Jump Start program to help you get up and running on a fresh instance of Salesforce uh, in, in a matter of weeks. Of course, we can help with the implementation itself um, and also after implementation, you know, what are the change management elements that are needed, whether it's training, whether it's governance, um, you know, whether it's user adoption, uh, we can help you with all aspects of this. So I do encourage you as you're thinking through this to please give us a call. Um, every organization we work with has their own unique situation, own unique circumstances. So the best thing to do is give us a call, a no pressure phone consultation, and we'll be happy to discuss with you your situation, what your thoughts are on program management or any of the Salesforce features, um, and how we can uh, help you in, in meeting your goals and help uh, moving your mission forward. Uh, so I do encourage you um, to reach out to us and, and surely follow us on social media. Uh, even if you're not necessarily ready to make a move at, at, in the near term, uh, we are frequently posting uh, information on our blog and our social media channels about things to consider for your nonprofit and for your nonprofit tech strategy. So uh, definitely follow us and keep in touch with us. And with that, I would like to thank you so much for your time and have a great rest of your day.